Um, health and safety. When Kenny Jacobs starts talking to you in two weeks' time about the health and safety of parcels, and we need to spend 250 million euros uh, so that the parcels will be healthier and safer uh, going around Dublin Airport, uh, ask him why the cargo airlines are not paying the 250 million euros. What they're doing is reg gaming the regulatory system, as they have always done. We need to spend 250 million building this. I mean, it's a two-lane tunnel. It's a four-lane tunnel to get to the other side of a taxiway that you can drive across. Uh, and none of the airlines support this. All of the airlines, Aer Lingus, ourselves, everybody else, completely opposed to this. The problem is he wants to spend 250 euro, million euros because the regulator will allow him to increase passenger charges at Dublin Airport to pay for a tunnel to ensure that the parcels are healthier and safer. And safer. Now, frankly, you can criticise me. I don't care much about the parcels. The parcels are not time sensitive. They're not subject, and they might one or two might fall off the back of a truck, but no one's going to get injured. The parcels can either drive across the taxiway or they can go around the airport, which is what they do at the moment. None of this is time sensitive. But runway, it's a taxiway. It's a closed runway. If you go back to the picture, and I, but I refer you to the picture. The old runway has now been closed. It's just a taxiway. Okay. And they do this in many European airports. Cologne Bonn, which is one of Germany's bigger airports, they actually uh, put down railway uh, gates, traffic both sides, and traffic lights. And if there's somebody using the taxiway, the, 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 the traffic can't drive across it, and then the aircraft goes through, up go the railway, and off you go. Two now, that, would, that would cost okay. you less. I'll let you back in again, but your time is up. Okay. But, sorry, that would cost you less than a million. And it would save our passengers, our consumers and visitors, the 250 million that he wants to inflate the airport charges by. Lastly, there is no pilot shortage, uh, I, I'm happy to say. There is a, a report put out generally by the pilot unions uh, about every three or four years that there's a worldwide shortage of pilots. Uh, there has never been a shortage of people who earn what pilots earn, and they are entitled to it. It's a very skilled profession. Uh, we are training uh, about 1,000 cadets every year. We are opening up. Presently, we're spending 50 million building a pilot training centre in Madrid and another one in uh, in uh, Krakow in Poland to take our annual capacity for pilot. We're going to produce 1,500 cadets every year. We need about seven, eight hundred cadets for our own resources, so we're training more uh, trainee pilots than we need. We already have a large pilot training school in Ireland, in Dublin. Uh, in Swords, we spent about 25 million euros on it. It's uh, just close to Dublin Airport. Four, uh, six simulators, state of the art, and we it produces about 250 or 300 uh, cadets, pilot cadets every year. Pilots are a very skilled profession, uh, but they are very well paid. Uh, they do have uh, very good working conditions. By law, a pilot cannot fly more than 900 hours uh, a year. By law which is an average of 18 hours a week if you run it over a, a 50 or a 48 hour uh, year. So uh, I wouldn't begrudge them at all what they earn. Uh, it is a pr particularly easy job on a sunny day when there's no clouds, but they earn every cent of their corn when you're landing in crosswinds or thunderstorms as we've had all over Europe or in low visibility. They earn every cent of it, but there is no pilot shortage. And I'm pleased to say, certainly in Ryanair, on, we are, we're essentially going to be the only big 737 operator in Europe, and we're training more pilots than we will need for ourselves.